Okay, welcome, welcome to Clear Vision Wednesday, everybody. This I'm Claudia Mühlenweg. I am the creator of the Natural Clear Vision Method and the founder of the Natural Clear Vision Institute. And I still see a loading bar, so I'm not sure. I think we are live on YouTube now. Welcome, welcome, everybody. So today our topic is it's kind of based on the uh, the observances that the American Academy of Ophthalmology puts out. We don't do that every month, but sometimes it makes sense and this month's um, observances is about workplace eye wellness or vision wellness. And uh, they focus mostly on safety, you know, wearing protective goggles and those kind of things. But I want to add another layer to this piece of the puzzle because a lot of us are spending the majority of our day at work, right? And not everybody is an office worker. And so I will, I will go into like 10 different um, professions and talk about what's important for each of those professions because the visual tasks for these professions are very different. That said, we, there are certain things that we all need to look at. And so I wanna go through the commonalities for us, things that everybody should be doing or needs to do or needs to be aware of before we dive into the specifics, okay? So let's get started. I don't have slides or anything. I'm just gonna talk here. But the first thing that's really important is if you are wearing glasses, only wear them when you really need to. So let's say you're nearsighted, you might need them for driving, but you might not need them for reading or the computer, right? So depending on your level of nearsightedness, or if you're farsighted, maybe you're okay to go, uh, you don't need them for driving because you have better than 20, 40 vision, um, but you only need them for reading and then use the weakest glasses that you can use. Just know that glasses or diopters in the glasses, which is a way of showing the strength of a glass, uh, of lens, is just for one specific distance, right? So any kind of glass that you have, uh, usually single distance, and that means they only work for computer distance or reading distance or uh, driving distance, like far vision, right? So no lens is that is, except for our natural lens in the eye, is actually accommodating to all these different um, distances. Now, you might be used to that, especially as a nearsighted person, you might be used to using your distance prescription for reading, but that is putting a huge strain on your eyes and it's not something you should be doing. That's why my tip is quickly for those of you wearing contacts that are spending the majority of the day um, at the screen at you know two feet distance of the computer, get your contact prescription for that distance and then add additional you know glasses on top for driving, let's say you're nearsighted. So that's just a little tip here. And the next uh, level of this is, that's why I say no progressive. So what do progressives do or what are progressive glasses? Progressive glasses are glasses that are not single distance in the whole lens. I don't actually have any glasses here <laughs> to put on my face, but they have different levels of diopter strength. And progressive basically mean in the old days we had bifocals, right? You could see that line in the glasses. There was one strength of diopters for close-up vision and one on top for distance vision. Progressives are similar, but they have a gradation from the top to the bottom to different levels of diopters. Now, why do I say don't wear progressive glasses? Because they make you do weird things with your head, depending if you want to, like, you know, whatever diopter level you need. So I see people in offices at the computer with this head posture um, because they want to look through the lower part of the lens because it's close up, but the lower part of the lens is assuming that you're looking down, right? That you're reading. So that's the problem with these glasses. They make assumptions that when we look straight, we look far, and when we look down, we look near, or we're reading. Now, a lot of people look straight when they're at the computer and they do this because they, you know, so, or you walk down a flight of stairs or you go hiking and you look down, but that distance is not reading distance depending on how tall you are. So everybody that got progressives initially, their brain was like, oh, this doesn't feel right. And then you get used to them. And the reason I want to say don't get used to them is because there is a correlation to posture and astigmatism, which was discovered by Elliot Forrest, an optometrist in the 1980s. There is there's studies, but there's, they're not on PubMed, or at least you can't find the whole thing on there. But he found a correlation of astigmatism to, you know, the, the head posture, the head tilt, like rotation. You know, this, this is actually the tilt, I guess. This is the rotation. And then also, um, I don't know what you would call this exactly, but how you how your chin is moving in space. So these things have a strong correlation on the um, creation of astigmatism, um, which is something that you don't want to get. And if you have it, in most cases, especially if you're under one diopters, eye doctors that I know actually confer with that, 
any astigmatism under one diopter, which you can see in your cylinder in the prescription, the cylinder is the strength of astigmatism in diopters, is usually negligible. In other words, you wouldn't even make a difference in your glasses. And I recently held a, a class where we looked at different people's prescription and almost everybody had a cylinder of one or less, a lot of times just a quarter or half a diopter, which is really not something that you need in your glasses. And that another reason for that is because it only makes the center of your glasses sharp, which we will talk a little bit in, in a little bit about movement, but you want a lot of movement. And so the more, you know, those corrections, the more your eyes are kind of locked into place and the less movement you have in your eyes. And that's something that is making your vision worse. So the only exception, we will get to that in a moment, is to the only time I would say not progressives, but the old fashioned bifocals are useful if you are a professional driver or let's say a pilot. And if you're somebody in your job that know that has to need or needs correction for both distance and dashboard, and that could be far-sighted or near-sighted, but you cannot do without because if you only wear distance glasses, your near vision would be blurry or vice versa. But basically you need correction for both. Because as a driver and as a pilot, you always look straight ahead far. And when you look down, you look at your, your, your dashboard or your, you know, your controls. So that is the one exception where we know we always have straight distance looking down is the near point. So in that case, bifocals will be a better choice than progressives, again, because they correct for those two distances. Now, another common thing, I talked a little bit about movement, right? So Elliot Forrest also discovered in, this, in his research with thousands of patients that the people that have the strongest astigmatism are people that are always moving their eyes without the head. Without the head. So let's say, let me see if I can find a pair of glasses. Yeah, here, I found a pair of glasses. So let's say you are somebody who started with reading glasses, right? You might do this. So you have your reading glasses kind of here at the bottom of the nose. And then you always look up um, to look at the distance and you look down to read and you look up instead of, you know, when if you were having them here, you would you and you don't need them for distance, you would have to like take them off. So that creates an axis of 90 because you're always vertically moving your eyes without moving your head. And he also found that people that have a, you know, usually horizontal, like around zero, 180 degree axis in their astigmatism, they do, might do a lot of movements left and right. And I see that with accountants, with people that have a lot of papers left and right, or people that have a lot of monitors, where they consistently move their eyes left and right, but they don't actually move their head. So what you want to do is move your attention, move your head and your eyes together, and, and if necessary, the whole body, but you don't want to just consistently do this or this, or up and down. While we can that, do that, and while it's okay, it's actually a nice stretch for your eye muscles, just like the yoga clocks, right? You look up, you look down, but that's not how we should be looking all day, right? That's a specific eye muscle stretching exercise. That's not how we should be looking all day. You always want to move your attention, right? If I see something here, I'm not going to be like, what is that? I'm going to move my attention over there. So that's one thing about the posture. Another thing, speaking of movement, for that goes for a lot of professions um, and even in other daily life aspects is the peripheral vision. We have a high focus on central focus, uh, especially when we wear glasses, right? We almost ignore the world around us. And good vision is always the combination of the focus where we put where we point our eyes at, the near periphery, the middle periphery, and the outer periphery, which is also top and bottom, of course. And good vision always requires both. And especially if you're driving, you know, your peripheral vision better be good because otherwise you might kill people. <laughs> Um, as you're driving. But in, if you sit at your desk at the office, you might think like, why is that important? Because the peripheral vision is about relaxation and the more strain you put on your central vision, the more efforting you might feel in your eyes versus having this more awareness of your space around you. Um, and there are certain things that we can do to improve that. So one thing is I learned that from my colleague Mia Schneider, um, so it's like basically sticking a, so this is not what you do while you're working, but it's something that you can practice separately. You put a, um, a post-it sticker or something like, um, and this one is a little, you have to use a little tape here, but you basically now, um, you know, don't have any central vision. And now you can, you can see how much you see in your peripheral. So it's a way to explore the peripheral, um, you know, to, to open up the periphery, which is a really, really important thing to do. My friend and colleague, Irina Castle, has a fantastic tool. She developed this tool. Initially, 
to help her sons who play soccer become better soccer players because she noticed that these kids run around like like horses with blinders. They don't notice their peripheral vision. And so she created this tool called the Eyesight Clarity Trainer. I love this tool because unlike the post-it sticker, it's a very, it gives you a very specific shield. So this is for instance, for near periphery, it just blocks your near periphery, but the middle and the outer periphery are still there. And then she has different other shields. So she has one for middle and for far periphery. So you can see that it have come in different width. And you can also just work with one eye at a time. So you can include, you just put that on here. So you can work with one eye at a time if you want to. So these are, this is a great tool to use for just, it's, and you have a peripheral vision on the side and the top and the bottom. Um, this is a great way to, you know, make it a game. And there's also balls, so you can put these on and then use tennis balls or other balls to stimulate the peripheral vision. Because in the periphery, we only see movement. We don't actually see colors in the outer periphery. We only see movement. So that's a great way to, you know, but you can just use this, this patch, the paper, um, to work on your peripheral vision and improve that. And in your job, if you're driving, right, you already have movement there. There's people, there's cars. Um, again, we get into the specific pro um, professions, but in the office, you might want to put, you know, bright lighting. You might want to make sure maybe there's some movement in the periphery. So that's important. Um, I'm looking at my little cheat sheet here. Other thing that people often don't do, it doesn't matter if you're on the screen, but that's when it's especially bad is blinking. So blinking helps you to relax your eyes and lubricates your eyes. It prevents staring, which is like what we do when we when we try really hard to look at something. So blinking is a counter the best thing to do against dry eyes. Um, and studies have found that people looking at screens blink way less. They often blink only two to three times per minute when we should be blinking every two to three seconds or even more. So blinking is one of those things that is important for everybody. I used to, when I first learned vision improvement, I totally didn't blink. And I would just, in the car when I was driving, I was constantly reminding myself, blink, blink, and I put stickers on my computer. Now, um, another thing that's really great for vision improvement, that's not something that you can do in some professions, yawning. So yawning, uh, it lubricates our eyes, it stretches the jaw muscles, it's a really like stretching, you know, like really stretching and yawning is a great way to create relaxation in your body. Um, and relaxation is the way that we see best when we are relaxed. It's the only time we actually have peripheral vision. So if we are in fight or flight mode or white knuckle at the wheel, we will have more of a tunnel vision, which makes us a way more dangerous driver than somebody who has maybe tiny, tiny bit of blur. Because if your peripheral vision is bad, especially as a driver, you are a big danger to the other people around you. Um, breathing. Breathing is another way to get into the relaxed state. Um, so the stretching and the yawning, but also what you shouldn't be doing when you're driving. Your yawning is okay, but not stretching. You right, you have the hands on the wheel. Um, but for instance, um, breathing. So when we have a little bit longer exhales, it tells our body, our nervous system it's, that we are relaxed. So sometimes when we get anxious, we hyperventilate, right? We breathe really fast. You know, it might be that, um, you know, that activating breath where it's like two inhales, one exhale, you know, Huberman talks about this all the time. But when we want to relax, we want to make the exhales a little bit longer. Now, you don't want to get so relaxed that you fall asleep. Um, but getting into that relaxed state, especially if we are nervous or stressed out about something, is really useful for everybody. Then resting your eyes, right? Resting your eyes, obviously, again, not when you're performing your job, but in between, you can just close your eyes. Close your eyes just a little bit. Sometimes we don't have to look, especially when we're attending calls. You know, we can turn video off maybe and just close the eyes and give them a break. Or you can do palming, which you might know what that is. That's some people call it cupping. You um, use your cupped hands and you cover your closed eyes. Um, you relax your elbows and your shoulders. And it's a really, really deep relaxation. It's like a spa treatment for your eyes because there's warmth, there's darkness. And then you put your mind to something really relaxing. And I, I call, always talk about pee and palm. When you go to the bathroom, you can just you know wash your hands beforehand, of course. And then you just do a little bit of that with your elbows on your knees, uh, on your thighs. It's it's really relaxing. And even if you just do one minute, assuming there's no long line at the bathroom in your office, let's say. So, um, and then another couple more things. So we always want to move our attention near and far, right? Our lens 
um, that we want to move our lens in the eye. The lens gets bulgy and thick when we look up close and it looks it's relaxed when we look in the distance. So I'm not a big fan of these 20, 20, 20 rules because I always say who sets a timer for 20 minutes to look for 20 seconds, 20 feet in the distance. I think it's more important to set up your environment in a way where it's easy for you to shift your focus from near to far. Um, again, when you're in an office, if you're, if you're in a cubicle, it's a little bit more challenging, but I have my office, I'm looking out a window. Um, so you wanna make sure that you make it easy to your, for yourself if you're driving, you can always move your attention near and far if you, you know, when you're on the road. Um, but making finding a way to move your attention from near to far and not look at a lot, lot for a long time at one distance, because our eyes, especially at the near point, that's when there are the muscles are all engaged. The medial um, muscles here, they pull the eyes. Do I have two eyeballs? Yep, I've shown this before. So when we look in the distance, our outer eye muscles are, my eyes are a little wonky here, but the mus eyes are like parallel to each other, right? When we look up close, we have to converge, meaning the inner eye muscles have to tighten. And in addition to the lens, like I said, the ciliary muscle has to tighten. So the, so the close-up vision is a muscular effort for the eyes versus looking for us is relaxing for the eyes. So finding times to relax. And then the last two things I wanna talk about sunlight and daily exposure to natural light is so, so important. Um, we wanna get first, and it doesn't have to be sunny, it can be overcast like it is for me today, getting natural light into your eyes first thing in the morning. And if you wake up like when it's so dark like me, you can use an infrared, a near infrared lamp, or you can just wait till the natural light comes out and you can do other things beforehand. But you wanna get the, once the light comes up, you wanna, Get, get outside and get a little bit of natural light. And then same thing in the evening, in the afternoon. So in car glass and most modern buildings have UV protection. So you depends on your car and your, how old it is. Um, but basically we don't get the full spectrum through glass. So it's definitely important to go outside and get the actual natural light into our eyes, onto our skin, really important with hormones. And the last point I wanna make that goes for everybody, healthy food. We know that sugar kills your vision. And I used to work in an office and I was always the healthy, the health nut is what people called me. So I brought my little lunch bag to the office um, and I had my salad in there. And so don't rely on vending machines or on the food trucks. Maybe once in a while that is a nice treat, but a lot of times those are greasy, too much salt, too much sugar. And so pack your own lunch so that you are in control or if you eat breakfast, you know, provide for yourself. You know, I always do that even when I'm flying and even if I fly business class and I have my special meal ordered, I always pack my own food because I never know what I'm going to get. And I want to make sure I have some nourishing food with me. So I even got my contract. I meant to bring a picture of him. I posted on Instagram yesterday. He always, you know, they always ordered like the, you know, PF, not PF Chance, what is it called? Panda Express, you know, and all this stuff. And then I taught him a few things and then he was bringing his own lunch cooler with like some vegetables and some, you know, things chopped up and, and that's okay to treat yourself once in a while, but really you want to make sure that you have the eye foods, the dark leafy greens, that you have all the vegetables and food, that you have some form of healthy fat um, that you bring that right versus relying on, on those, you know, other options, which can be a great backup, but it, I would really recommend that for all the professions if at all it's possible, bring your own lunch cooler with a little pack if you have the option in your job. Now, I want to get into some of the 10, 10 different professions, and I just picked some. It's funny, I actually picked some on my own, and then I asked ChatGPT about different visual requirements. And interestingly enough, it's almost exactly the same that ChatGPT picked. So office worker, right? Office worker, a lot of us work in offices. And what we talked about, you don't want to wear progressives. If you were working on the screen, get glasses for that distance or, a, you know, maybe have another pair in the car for driving, but wear that pair. And if you, as some of your coworkers are a little blurry when you see them from really far away, that's okay. You know, it's, it's, uh, I hear that a lot that, oh, I have social anxiety. I people think I'm arrogant. My vision, I had perfect, and I had perfect vision. I just, sometimes you were, you know, you were thinking about a project you're working on, you didn't pay attention to them. So get rid of that fear and literally focus on where you need clarity. It's on the screen. 
Um, another thing I love to recommend is um, it's under my desk right now. I would have to pull it out. Have a desk. If you're working from home, especially your company might not go for that, but have a desk that you can make a standing desk. I have one. I just push a button and it goes to seated so I can change. And when you're standing, standing on a little balance board, I love the brand Fluid Stands. We will put affiliate links, uh, my affiliate links on there. I love this brand. It's a little gentle balancing board where it's not like a, you know, like what do you call those balls? A Bosu ball at the gym where it's like, you know, you basically really hard time staying put. This is designed for standing desks and you can use it in the kitchen when you chop food. So it gives you this little bit of gentle movement, which helps you to, you know, movement is so important for clearing things up. And I never forget the first time I was, um, I had private lessons many years ago with a teacher in, in Los Angeles named Sue Choi. And she put me on one of those balance boards. She was also a yoga teacher. And I immediately noticed how my vision would clear up. So just this little extra movement that you, it's, it's very minor when you're balancing on the board. It also helps your your hips and your whole posture to be on a on the balancing board when you when you're at a standing desk, right? You can't do that seated. So get up and do a little bit of standing work. And if you don't have that, sometimes they have these, which you can probably get for your offices, you know, those little extra things that you can put on your desk. I've seen ads for these uh, little things that you can, they can raise your computer up. So do that. That's a really good thing to, thing to do. Um, and then if you can, like what I'm just doing here is swaying, right? Creating a little bit of movement, even if you're not at your desk, maybe you're outside, um, but creating a little bit of movement I always go outside. When I was working in the office, I made sure I went outside. I mean, also I live in Southern California, but if you can go for maybe a little short walk uh, outside or eat your lunch outside, if they have, if there's a space for you to do that, um, if not, then eat your lunch inside, but then go for a little walk. Those are all things. Have something in the periphery that is interesting and maybe moving. You know, I have a mobile hanging over there that's moving. But, uh, and if you can set up your desk in a way where you can look, look outside, then definitely do that. You can do the yawning and stretching. Usually nobody at the office is, you know, <laughs> you, you don't have to worry so much about it. And you can even do palming. I had a friend in Germany, she worked for the, for the police in, in Hamburg, Germany, and she would do this, at, she would do palming at her desk. And her colleagues were like, what are you doing? And so she told them, and she had really great vision. So she was actually an inspiration to everybody else. So maybe you're shy, but maybe maybe you're an inspiration to other people in your office and you do this and you like other people, like, oh, this is so cool. Let me try this out. So don't don't discredit the idea that you're actually somebody who's inspiring other people, right? Um, what else can you do in the office? We talk about sunlight, the standing desk. Yeah, that's pretty much it. And then blink, blink, blink. Really put stickers on your computer and then pack that healthy lunch so that you have something good to eat, um, you know, and maybe you find a couple other people in the office that like the same, and then you can all meet up together and eat your lunch together. So um, next up on my list is a professional driver. So it doesn't matter if you're an Uber driver, if you drive trucks, but you're basically spending most of your day driving, right? So for you, um, if you're driving most of the day and you don't need, you only need distance correction, then do not wear, uh, only wear the distance correction, right? And, and your glasses. Uh, or your contact. So that's important for you. And if you do need additional support for reading the dashboard or your navigation, if you're driving and you need the Google Maps or Apple Maps, whatever you use, then definitely bifocals would be my choice for that. Um, the yoga tune-up balls are great. I haven't really talked about those, forgot those in the beginning. I use these in all my, in my classes. It's a massage because we're all tight. We're all tight. And I love this when I'm driving. So I put them I put them behind my back like so, and then press against them in the car seat. And then I, I lean forward a little bit. And so they make their way down my spine. And sometimes if something one side hurts, you can put them on the vertically, but you can put them anywhere on your back. It feels so good when you're driving to have that little extra support. And if you're, your hamstrings are tight and you drive an automatic, you could also put this under the left thigh and you know to let, and then move your leg a little bit but again, maybe when you do it at the stoplight, I drive a stick shift, so I can't. I, I have have to have my left foot on the on the clutch, um, so I can't do that. But this is great for planes, also. Not maybe if you're the pilot and you're an autopilot, but if you're a passenger on a plane, this is really great too. These balls are amazing in terms of helping you to relax some tight areas. Um, 
what else? So if you're driving or, you know, you have, you know, the, the glasses with the UV block, make sure you go outside, stretch your legs, get some actual natural light into your eyes as a driver. Um, you can practice something that I learned from my colleague, Peter Greenwald called the line, which is that idea of moving your attention from near to far. And you can do that with the road in front of you, assuming, you know, let's say you're driving on like highways and there's no, not much traffic. You can always like moving your attention and you want to move your attention, not with a finger, obviously, but just, I'm just saying, moving your eyes from the horizon, closer up, closer up. So you can kind of do those swings. Um, the peripheral vision is usually stimulated with the, you know, by driving automatically because you're moving forward. So that's something being aware of the peripheral vision and um, maybe do some, some head rolls when you're stopped, when you take a break, uh, obviously not while you're driving, don't close your eyes or do palming while you're driving. But stretch, uh, yawning, you can do that when you're driving. And then pack yourself a healthy lunch, especially if you're driving, you know, all these rest stops, uh, not rest stops, but those gas stations, you know, they usually have fast food places there. Nothing good that you can eat there usually. So um, maybe make some nice drinks for yourself too that you maybe some lemonade, so don't buy. You ought to save a lot of money that way, by the way. So I always, you know, I always, my daughters always make a joke. I'm always doing picnic. So when I drive longer distances, I always, you know, find a rest stop and I eat, uh, I eat there and not at those um, places with the gas stations. And if you're an Uber driver, you know, and you drive at night, then know that at night, our we have better the rod cells work better at night and they have more peripheral awareness versus central clarity, unless we have lights shining onto signs. Our night vision is just not as good. So for you at night, it could also just be simple things as like reducing your sunlight sensitivity. So I didn't talk about that in the beginning, but maybe doing something what we call sunning, you know, where you close your eyes initially during the day, obviously you do that during the day and let the sun uh, shine on your eyes. And when I stop wearing sunglasses, except, except in extreme conditions like ocean or skiing, I didn't deal, I didn't have that trouble with the oncoming headlights anymore. So for a lot of people, the, the bright headlights of oncoming traffic is really like blinding and stressful. And when you reduce your light sensitivity with sunlight exposure, you will actually be able to handle that better. And some people actually like the the the, the yellow glasses. So um, I have glasses that I want to show. This is actually for other professions, but I love these glasses. I will get into that in the next uh, few job segments. But sometimes people like a little bit of the yellow might actually reduce your eye strain when you're driving at night. So maybe that's you. Um, you can try this out. What else for driving? Yeah, have the balls maybe in your back. Um, and then if you do need that correction, the bifocals, but not uh, progressive glasses. Now, another job is a cashier or a grocery store cl clerk. So you might be working in most grocery stores that I know have horrible lighting fluorescent lighting and sometimes if you were in one of the work in one of these big stores like not just grocery stores but like one of these electronic stores there's no natural light coming and you're literally in this artificial light all day long and for you it's super important to block that junk light so natural daylight has the full spectrum but fluorescent light has very high levels of green and blue and that's where the blue light becomes a problem it's not a problem in natural daylight because blue light keeps us awake, but you don't want that those intense intense spikes. And I the glasses I love that I that I was recently like a six months ago introduced to are the so Viva Ray glasses. And this is just one style that come in like aviator style that come in lots of styles. And this is the daytime. It's not just blue blocking. It's basically turning the junk light into a more of a full spectrum. So it's not just, we don't just want to block blue light. We want to have um, as closely as possible the natural light spectrum. So these will be glasses that you do not wear outside. And if you have natural daylight exposure, if you're a gardener or something, then do not wear these glasses. But if you work in a big box store or you're a cashier or somewhere where there is no natural light, these will be my guess. And they actually come, they actually produce them with prescriptions. So you can actually get your prescription. If you need glasses, you can get those with these glasses, I love them. And um, we will get more into, into other professions later. But what I love about Viva Rays is that they also have the circadian clip-ons, right? You've heard that in the evening, we want to reduce the brightness of light 
and even more blue light. So after sunset, our biology is is meant to relax and you know re release melatonin so that we slowly get sleepy. And when we are exposed to in, in, in to fluorescent lighting in the store or from computers or other environments, after the sunset, our system is ramped up um, to a degree that's not healthy. And so they have these really nice clip-ons. So instead of having three pairs, you can just clip on the orange ones for the evening. I use them all time in the evening. And then an hour before bedtime, this is not so much for the grocery uh, clerk, but if for an hour before bedtime, you want to put red on. So that really dims the light. And it also, you know, it mimics sunset, right? It mimics, like the, the light is more warm in the evening. So that's what I recommend. Obviously, when you're on the job and you don't want to get tired and you have to drive home, then just wearing these would be would be my recommendation. And then the second you get home, you clip on the orange one and then you clip on the red one an hour before bed. So what else? Grocery store clerk, or like if you work in the store and you're packing, you're unloading. I used to work in a, a long time ago, I worked in a place where like there was a, a mail order, like those places where people order things on. Now we do it in the eighties, nobody ordered online. You had catalogs, like the Sears catalog and you order. And I worked in that store and I had to put the stuff back that people return. And you wanna make sure that you're always moving your whole body. What I talked about earlier, right? You wanna move your attention. So don't just do this or scanning, but always move your head and your eyes together. That's really important. Pack a healthy lunch. Another thing for if you work in a store, use your non-dominant hand. That can Because both eyes are connected to both sides of the brain, you can help your vision by just trying, like maybe you're sweeping or maybe you're cleaning up or maybe you're putting things in the shelf. Do it with the other hand. Maybe not the whole time uh, if you get too slow, but switch things up, right? Use the other hand. Those are all good, like some neck stretches, maybe some circles with your head to relax some tension. Um, and if you're a cashier, um, and if, you're, if your store allows it, put these, uh, at least one of them under your feet so that you can relax and massage your feet um, instead of just standing on those wobbly mats that they have, the cushioned mats. This is really nice to relax your feet. And when your feet are relaxed, you have better balance, which will help you with your similar system and your vision. Um, looking at my notes here, that's basically, you know, make sure you get outside, get some sunlight breaks, um, and also having maybe a little sway when you work in the store. This depends on how much public uh, interaction you have with people. Um, my next job is a medical practitioner. So that could be a doctor, it could be a nurse. Um, I know that sometimes you might also work in an area where there's no daylight exposure. So anything that just we just talked about, the store clerk or somebody who works in the store, um, the Viva Ray glasses would be great if you are exposed to fluorescent lighting all day long and you don't really get natural light. So wearing these all day long would be good. Go out for sunlight breaks. I know it could be crazy, people with working long, long, long shifts. Um, but if, if you can, and if you only can open a window and just get some natural light into your eyes, and I know some of the hospitals or buildings might have windows that you can't open. Um, it makes it a little bit more challenging, but you can still find a little time because here's the thing when we when I used to smoke I know I'm fessing up um people that smoke always find time to smoke they always find the five minutes to go downstairs and smoke a cigarette right so sometimes I think of like think like a smoker find a time instead of doing something that kills you and destroys your vision something that is healthy like a health break a little mini wellness break a little time out for your eyes or for your health um, pack the healthy lunch, of course. And if you have a little break, uh, you know, do some farming. That's really re great if you work in the medical field. Movement, right? You're already moving a lot, shifting your attention. Make sure you don't do the thing with the readers. I, you know, if you read charts um, as a doctor or a nurse, you know, you obviously have to have, make sure you have the right, you know, your job is life or death for people, right? When you read the wrong and you give them the wrong infusion, you know, you could kill people. So you have to always, you want to make sure that you have the right um, um, strength, you know, so make sure that you that you don't always do that all the time because then you will get that astigmatism. So um, I know it's a little more inconvenient, but really um, setting yourself up for success is super important. And blinking, blinking, blinking is also a, a good, good thing to do. All right, so next up, teacher. So I think most classrooms have some kind of natural daylight, I think. 
Um, I haven't been to a school in <laughs> quite a while, but I remember we always had some natural light or some windows in most classrooms. So you should technically be getting some kind of natural light exposure to the windows. Um, but, you know, as a teacher, you know, moving around and I taught, you, so you could be a yoga teacher, you could be a, an elementary school teacher, but, you know, walking, walking, walking around, you know, looking at the pupils, like looking around, like shifting your attention. And again, make that sure that you do that with your head together um, is really good. Um, stimulate peripheral movement, right? So noticing the things, um, maybe you see some people talking there and, you know, you just notice them like moving. It's a school is a great environment if you have life a live audience of pupils in your classroom because they will not, especially the younger they are, there will be natural movement that stimulates your peripheral vision. So maybe thank them for stimulating your peripheral vision instead of, so kids need to move. And of course we don't want them to be, um, what do you call it, distracting or be, di be disrespectful, but we also need to, we need to know that kids are moving and they can be way better with attention if they moved a little bit. And that goes for you too, right? Moving a little bit will help you be more focused as well. Also pack a healthy lunch, blink, and as a teacher, you can teach skills to kids. You can be like blink, 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 blink. You know, you can you can have a huge influence, and especially if you work with younger children. Maybe not so much with high school. I don't know. <laughs> um, next, photographer. So as a photographer, nowadays you have you know you don't just have to do and even in the old days, you have to look for the viewfinder. So you need to have that close up. You know, pull the focus. You also need if you do landscapes, you need to. You know, you need to have this great distance vision. If you do portraits, you need to socially connect with people and make them relaxed so that they can, you can get great shots of them, right? You have to be a very good social interaction person if you work with people. So there's different skills, but blinking, always when you work with people, blinking relaxes people. Nothing is worse than somebody staring at you like this. You, like, you, you immediately freeze up if you're the subject, you know, if a photographer, so movement is also great for photography. Um, the sunlight, if you work outside, then you're already getting a lot of sunlight, but maybe you work in the studio. And so you work behind, you know, maybe you even have the windows blocked out. Uh, I see that a lot in film sets because you want your lighting and you don't want the daylight. So a lot of photo studios have zero natural daylight. And so having, um, obviously when you look at color, on the monitor, you don't want to have any color correction glasses, but maybe if you're exposed to this bad lighting, this could also be helpful for you. Um, and then resting your eyes, right? Resting your eyes more, um, giving them a little break, close your eyes, take a few deep breaths, um, you know, before you before you do something. Obviously, you're a very different scenario if you're a war photographer or if you're sitting in your studio and you're shooting cars, you know, that are just very patient and they sit there and sit there and sit there and they, they don't move uh, on their own. So yeah, those are all things. Um, remember you to simulate your profile vision. I know as a photographer, you might be in a very dark studio um, because you have, your, again, your lights. So going outside, um, getting some natural light regularly throughout the day will be really helpful. Um, yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And also having those, those can be great under your feet uh, when you when you stand at the computer and do the the editing period. Um, everything that works for office workers is for you too as a photographer. If you're doing the editing, take frequent breaks, um, right? And then don't wear the bifocals. Wear only the glasses or the contacts that you need. Okay, um, pilot, right? Pilots. Uh, I actually have some pilot friends and they told me you don't need um, 2020 vision anymore. Back in the day, you had to use have perfect vision. Now they do accept that you have glasses potentially. So glass pilots are one of the few that are in, I don't know enough about all the modern plane, but you can be exposed to really bright lights above the clouds. So this is definitely a profession where the, I think the aviators were, where the sunglasses were actually invented for pilots. Um, and back in the old, 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 old days, right? You were sitting in an open plane, there, there was no glass, but pilots is definitely a profession where sunglasses are important. Um, you can also make sure that you have some UV block and um, you know maybe these could be enough for you, but you definitely want protection because you are exposed to extreme bright light if you fly during the day, that is not at night, obviously. And if you fly at night, um, so you know you notice that you know, mo most pilots have auto autopilot nowadays,
But at night, your, your central vision doesn't work well. Your peripheral vision is actually better at night. But you obviously have lights on in the cockpit, but it's usually pretty dark in there. So I'm not a pilot. I don't know all the in and outs. But you probably, this would be a profession, like I said, where bifocals could be helpful so that you can read the instruments, but you can also look, um, especially for landing and I guess during the flight, there's not that much to see. Um, but yeah, it's mostly the right, the near vision and also eat. Uh, maybe you have, they deliver you amazing food, but if they don't, you know, pack yourself some healthy snacks as well as a pilot, some healthy lunch or dinner. And whatever it is, um, because a lot of times, I mean, sorry, even the best airlines, most airplane food is not that great. Um, blinking, you know, if you're on a break, do some palming, resting your eyes, taking naps, all those things. Um, librarian. So a lot of libraries, you might also work in uh, artificial light. And if you do, then obviously the Viva Race would be my recommendation. Get a lot of breaks as you can. Go outside. That goes for a lot of people. Move the head along, right? So you have a, you know, you might read a, you know, you stamp the books or you scan them um, and then you look far to the next person in line. So you automatically almost have this kind of far and near vision where you make sure that you, again, do not use your reading glasses to just don't do this, you know, and then look over the eyes. But um, if you do need reading glasses, then it's, it's better to actually just take them off, look in the distance or just, you know, you see enough with the glasses that somebody, even if it's not clear, and ideally, you don't wear them um, if you don't need to. What else about librarians? You know, you want to always, the near far, we talk about that, the healthy lunch. So there's a lot of repetition about the stuff I said in the beginning. Um, do some, rest your eyes on the brakes, close your eyes, um, you know, when obviously not when you're serving uh, patrons in the library. But, you know, move your books are a great way to notice movement and to do what we call the long swing, right? Notice how all the books, when you're moving yourself, that the books all seem to move in the opposite direction. When you go through the aisles, you do a lot of like, you know, your eyes are automatically moving, trying to find that spot where you put the book back. You have a you have an environment except for maybe the light exposure that is actually really like a teacher where you actually have a pretty good environment in terms of for your visual health compared to other people. So you already have kind of a nice environment, but if you don't have light exposure, natural light, then make sure you wear the, those glasses, if, especially if it's a fluorescent light and go outside as much as you can. Okay, two more, the show a chef or cook. So depending if you work in a commercial kitchen and there's screens and that, you know, you do actually need, make sure that you wear some protective eye wear, right? That you don't get anything or like a knife. So as a chef, you might want to have actual protective gear um, you also, you know, the peripheral vision is super important, especially if you have more than one thing boiling or cooking. Um, so maybe at home, work with your peripheral vision, also move the head along. Um, ventilation is really important so that we're not exposed, especially with gas cooking, super important blinking. And if possible, increase the brightness, right? If it's about, if it's too dim, increase the brightness, if that's possible. Um, yeah, moving near and far. Um, you know, depending on your role in the kitchen, if you're only chopping all day, making sure you look up frequently, you look around and you work on your profile vision, that will really be helpful. And then lastly, security guard, right? If you're a security guard or depends if you work at night or during the day. So anybody, shift worker or security guard that works at night, obviously you have to be awake, right? So we don't want you to wear the Viva race at night at work because you will get really, really tired and you will not be a good security guard or a nurse when you do the night shift and you have these, you know, you put this on and you're going to be really sleepy. So for you, it's all in reversal. Um, so you have to make sure that you get good sleep at, in the, uh, at night. And um, I don't have it here right now. Viva Race also makes an amazing eye mask that blocks all light. They have little cushions for your eyes. It's adjustable and they're organic cotton. They're made from organic cotton. I love these. So you have to really block out all light at night when you're sleeping. Um, even they found in studies, even a little candle, just the light of a candle or a night light actually produces less good sleep. Even if you feel like you sleep well, they measured like heart rate variability and REM sleep and all this. And they found that people do not sleep as well. So I wear an eye mask, I wear the Viva Ray eye mask every night. Um, and then I, on the other nights, I wear my castor oil, organic cotton mask with my castor oil. 
So really make sure that there's no light coming and that goes really for everybody, but especially if you're a shift worker so that you can do in the day, have complete blackness. Um, what else is important? Um, getting, getting some natural light during the day if you're a shift worker, obviously. And a security guard, if you worked in the day, the whole thing, peripheral stimulation, you have to have good peripheral to notice what's going on. So don't just look at your screens. I see security guards sometimes sitting there all day just looking at their screens and never even look up. Um, you know, I saw I was in Mexico recently. There was a security guard at an apartment building. And, you know, we walked in and talked loud. And we were like, and we actually talked about how the security guard doesn't pay any attention. He stands to look up from his phone. So obviously looking far and near, um, walking, doing your rounds, walking around, sunlight breaks, and maybe doing a little bit of swaying, some gentle movement. Um, and notice notice that at night, when you work at night, uh, you can practice this with, with stars, that when you look at a star, you don't see it as well as if you look directly next to that star. That's because our rod cells don't have any central vision. During the day, it's the opposite. Obviously, there's no stars. But if you want to look at dots on the wall or something or letters on an eye chart, you see the one, you see the area best where you're looking at during the day. So I know that was a lot. I hope this was helpful, but really, I think the message here is, yes, some jobs are more prohibitive. You have stricter rules, you interact with uh, clients, uh, you know, patients or clients or, or um, patrons in your store. You can't just do what other things people might be doing, but you can still be um, an ambassador for your own vision and your own health and take those breaks. And if you're really good and productive at your job, which you will be, if you take more health breaks and if you get good sleep, you will, auto and if your vision is better, you will automatically be better at your job. So taking those breaks is really important. It will actually make you more productive. You can always have a chat with your boss and explain to them that you're not a lazy bum when you're resting your eyes, but you're actually helping you perform better and be more effective um, after you've done that little break. So sometimes, and, and don't be afraid of inspiring other people, right? They might think that you're weird and, you know, that's, they might think that anyway. Um, and so be that person that inspires other people um, instead of feeling like you have to hide what you're doing, right? So um, that's it for today. I hope this was helpful um, and you learned some things. I'm looking at the chat right now and the slip on colored lenses, Kali, we put, I think we put that in the show notes on YouTube. And if not, then we will make sure we add that. Um, yeah, it's, let me see. Is it? No, it's not. I apologize. Um, yeah, we missed. We forgot to put that in there. All the links should go in there for the Viva Ray glasses. Um, if my, I don't have them handy dandy right now, but we can um, we can put them in there. Um, and sorry, that fell to the cracks. We want to make sure we add all those links also to the balance board that I recommend, um, which I can show really quickly. So this is this is one with out, made out of recycled plastic and it's felt. And then I have another one with bamboo wood and that's um, with aluminum base or like a, um, so this is, you can see, it's kind of, it's very gentle and it just, it's, it has a pretty flat bottom. So it's not like a crazy ride when you stand on the board. So when I stand on it, I have to raise my desk now a little bit, but it's just like, oh, my lamp is falling over. But it's just, you know, you can also stand still on it, but it gives you that little bit of extra sway and it will help you relax. And it will also be really great for your posture and your whole, um, you just your balancing muscles in the body and the hips. So, um, okay, I will make sure I put those links in there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Deb is asking to avoid the stigmatism. You want to move your Think not like I always say, we're not owls, the birds, the, the owls can only, they cannot move their eyes in their sockets, but we want to always move our attention. So you want to move your eyes and your head together. Again, the eyes can obviously move a little bit more in the eye, right? And they can move a little bit and we want them to move a little bit, but you don't want to look constantly like over there like this. You want to always move your head um, and sometimes your body, depending on how far it is. So I hope that was helpful and we will add the links for the Viva Race and the uh, Eyesight Clarity Trainer for this tool um, into, the, into the chat so that you can, if you're interested in getting those. Um, and again, Viva Race also comes with a prescription. So if you have, if you don't want just the plain uh, glass, they come with prescription numbers in there, you can order it with prescription. And in that case, 
they are actually clear. So the, the regular ones are clear when you order them with prescription. These are the ones without a prescription. And then you have three clip-ons. You have the yellow, the orange, and the red, right? Does that make sense? So the base glasses will be clear with any prescription, and then you have three clip-ons. So which I love, That's, that makes me so excited. And also that you don't need like all these different pairs, but you can just clip on the other pair. And they come in lots of beautiful styles. All right, YouTube, thank you so much. This was great. If you have any further questions, put them underneath and we will comment after. And then really quickly, we won't have any Clear Vision Wednesday next week because next week is my free five-day program. See better in just five days. We will go live every single day at this exact time when we started at 12 Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern for live coaching. And that's not on YouTube. That is on a, a different platform. So you have to register for the five-day program and we will add the link to the YouTube description as well. And I'm only doing this once a year. It's a five-day free course called See Better in Just Five Days. And it comes with live coaching. We also actually give away prizes. We give away a pair of Reva Rays. We give away the eyesight clarity trainer. So you can win those prizes when you join us and when you participate. So see you. I hope to see a lot of you on that five-day training. Um, and if you can't join us all the five days, um, that's fine. But the, the, the trainings are also pre-recorded. So you can actually get the trainings without attending the live calls. But the live calls is where we do the raffles and the, the coaching and all that stuff.